Armored Core Lore, the story of Armored Core 3. This timeline begins before there was even a date system in place, with the construction of the underground cities of Layered. Beginning with no date system in place, all we know is these cities will be complete before the outbreak of the Great Destruction. It's here we learn from the book Armored Core, Complete Works 10, that the city would be run by management. It is unknown at this point if this management was human or AI. However, it is very likely, due to the loss of lives, that an AI was already active and was the management spoken of within these pages. A strong case for this is when the Layered Calendar is established by the administration as the standard for people living in Layered. The year in the Layered Calendar is not based on Earth's orbital period and the day is not 24 hours long. Furthermore, the length of the year and the length of the day in the layered calendar has changed many times, making it impossible to measure the exact period of time. It would be later discovered that this was a measure taken to deprive the people of the rhythm of life, and to get them ready for their underground life. Could a human do this? Perhaps. However, in truth, this would be the first recorded date of this timeline. ED0000. It's during this time the administrator would confirm that some terrestrial environments had been restored to human habitable levels. As such, once again, the administration would adjust the layered calendar to the length of one year and one day on Earth, for the people's return one day to the surface. However, that return would never come. In fact, for the next 153 years, the administration would govern the cities and in turn the lives of the humans within. It's within this time corporations would be established, and humanity would once again begin to flourish, with the corporations building in sectors of layered, the rise of jobs, and even the first muscle tracers, prototypes, more commonly known as MTs, would begin production and testing. It's three years later that these two powerful corporations would then start to mass produce these MTs for practical use within their own factories, and for other manual labor intensive jobs. However, perhaps like all corporations, these machines are not enough, as they seek to expand and make more money. Research of these MTs into a more military use would begin, if not already in progress. By the time of ED-0166, the research of these MTs in combat roles would lead to the development of the next generation MTs, incorporating the core concept. Where we start to see these working MTs now take a human-like shape and gain the name Armored Cores. This due to their much heavier armor when compared to other muscle tracers. These new machines of war would rapidly become popular for the corporation's products and a new age war machine to fight each other with. However, these corporations would not escape the eyes of the administrator, who already seemed to have a plan in motion. For while there is no written account of when and how, it seems this AI administrator had already assigned a place for these ravens. In fact, it made it clear to all that to become a raven, one would have to pass a test and be assigned such a role by the administration itself. This seems to have been the birth of Global Cortex, a middleman service for the Raven to be hired by the corporations. It's here where all Ravens would have had to be registered, and while they seem to enjoy some freedom from the administrator rules, they would still be held accountable for how they acted. Which is made clear by the email when the Raven of Armored Core 3 becomes one of these Armored Core pilots. This business would boom and along with it the rise of the arena, where Ravens would battle it out for the entertainment of the people of Laird. However, it should be noted this middleman business would remain neutral during the wars between corporations, and only follow the rules of the administration of Laird. But this is when trouble would start to brew in the peaceful world of Laird, for in ED-0172, a disaster would happen. Many Laird citizens would die from a deterioration of water quality and air pollution, due to the failure of an environmental control system. Crest in particular would be heavily affected, however they swept this under the carpet quickly and quietly. This would lead 15 years later for a rebel group by the name of Union to be formed when an information leak reveals the administration has kept secret that the service has been restored. Armed clashes between Union and administration forces would follow. However, it's in the year ED-0187 where the Raven of Armor Corps 3 would become a key figure in this history. It begins with his first mission, End Employee Standoff. The Raven will be sent to remove rebelling workers from the Crest-owned Zidon Weapons Factory after they made the decision to shut it down to use the space to build more housing. The Raven, being fresh and new, will take this mission and cut down the workers, perhaps with a thought for them, as what this means is that these citizens will be reassigned jobs by the administration, which we would learn has the name Controller. The Raven, however, would complete this task with ease, 
only returned to have an email from Crest thanking him for a job well done. They explained that it was not their decision at all to close the area, but instead the controllers, who they believe is making the right call for all humanity's survival. This would be one of the many missions the Raven would face, as others include the removal of a smaller corporation force called Kisaragi by the much larger corporation at the time, Mirage. This being done due to the fact this smaller corporation found a vein of rich metal ore, and it was decided all three corporations would share the mine. However, Kisaragi, even after agreeing to this, would continue to mine, breaking a contract they made with both Crest and Mirage, and as such their force would have to be removed to fix this. Another mission would see the Raven defend the arena from terrorist forces who seemed to want to shut down the arena by attacking it. After this, however, the Raven would go back and forth between the three corporations, with missions all the while nothing seems to be happening. This would change, however, with a mission from Crest, named Eliminate Intruders, which would send the Raven to City Sector 513, a sector said to have been heavily damaged by earthquakes a few years back, and has since been deserted, with strict access over who may enter. Crest, however, had picked up movement in the area, and wants the Raven to go in and make sure none of them leave alive. It's not an unusual request, as such the Raven takes it, only to find this sector said to have had earthquakes looks untouched. Even his operator notices this and finds it all very odd. However, the Raven keeps going, killing these intruders in their MTs and tanks, before also killing another Raven by the name of Crossback, who comes to aid these troublemakers. After the mission, the Raven's operator would contact him by email with information about the sector being breached by an underground organization named Union. It is believed that this group is responsible for the number of recent uprisings, making them a threat to Laird, as their ideas conflict with the controllers. However, their main goal is still unknown at this time. She also notes there has been unusual rising sectors being closed off, and wonders if the Union has something to do with it. However, the Raven would also get an email from Crest. This one explained that once again, the decision to close this sector was the controllers, and they simply followed orders because they believe the controller is doing this to help them survive. This is our last refuge we have. No harm must come to it. They also make it very clear to the Raven that the truth, as far as he is concerned, is that the sector was damaged by earthquakes, and that's the truth. Hiding the truth about why a sector is closed, it's here we see that Crest seems to know more than letting on. However, the Raven has no right to question them. As such, he must move on taking on more missions for the corporations that would see him used as missile training and preventing Crest information capitals from falling to the hands of hijackers. It's after these, however, he would get his first message from Union. They tell the Raven they are in need of pilots like him, as they write the lies that govern our existence must be exposed and the truth revealed. The controller is hiding a power that even a Raven could not stop. It asks the Raven to think about what is going on while they continue to act. The Raven, perhaps more confused than curious, has this email put aside as his work goes on, putting down a mirage force by the request of Kisaragi before finally seeing something strange in his next mission, Defend Rugen Laboratory. It's here it is claimed a mirage force is attacking this Crest Laboratory, however when the Raven arrives the MTs on sight are not what he expected, large spear shaped ones that no corporation seems to have used. Could this be a new prototype? Questions, however, would have to wait, as the Raven saves the ally MT, Coldheart, here, before rushing off to aid the other Raven, Nightflyer. Only, when he finds this Raven, his foe is not who he expects. It's a strange AC with skills that seem to be unusual for the average AC pilot, as it hops and flies about in a way that would make most Ravens sick. The Raven, depending on whose report you believe, either manages to save his allies and defeat the strange AC, or flees from the battle. It's a twist in history we may never know the answer to. Yet what we do know is on his return, his operator has an email for him, and so does the Union. Starting with his operator, the Raven reads that there is some questions about his foe, as the AC is not registered with Global Cortex, a rule that all Ravens must follow by the word of the controller. She also writes that after analysing the Armoured Corps, that it seems this machine has levels of performance beyond that of an ordinary Armoured Corps unit. It's however the email from the Union, that would start the wheels of fate turning, as it reads that they believe the attack force was not Mirage at all, but the controller itself. But this raises the question, why would the controller attack a corporation that is loyal to it? The Union plans to find out, and show Laird what is really going on with all these recent incidents. 
Confused and perhaps a little shaken by this, the Raven puts the messages aside to get back to work. After all, being born under the controller rule, was it possible? What could it mean? Nevertheless, the Raven had little time to question before more work comes in. This time, the Raven would see himself fighting a giant spider in the waterways of Laird, grab the cargo of a sinking Mirage ship, and escort a new alloy sample that Crest created to their research lab. It's after this, however, that the Union would email him again, this time writing this. We have had abrupt interruption of power supply. The changes in the ecosystem due to the failure of the environmental system and the forced closure of sectors due to the runaway core. These anomalies, along many others, are becoming two common occurrences. Laird is no longer a utopia maintained by the controller. The truth of the matter is, the controller is malfunctioning. The time has come to take action. We will attempt to enter Laird Hub, where the controller is believed to reside. This would explain all these rogue attacks, the change in weather that sunk Mirage's ships, and the fact that the sectors are being closed off when there is clearly no damage to them. It is hard, however, for anyone to see this. After all, the controller has guided them for so long. Was this really the truth? Perhaps the Raven thought so, as he would then take the mission from the Union to aid in the takeover of a Crest storage facility, where he and a number of Ravens would secure the facility for the Union by taking out the generators that powered the defences, along with any Crest forces inside. It's noted here that Mirage also seems to be working with the Union, however they would not show up, as learned after in an email from the Union. The Raven would also learn that the group was unable to obtain the information on how to gain access to the controller they believe Crest had. The mission was a failure, and things would only get worse for the Union, as the next mission the Raven would take is from Crest themselves, who believes the Union's next move is to bomb the waste disposal network underneath the city, backed by Kisaragi. They found this out through one of their spies, and even seem to dismiss the idea that the controller is malfunctioning. The Raven will take this mission, however the act of bombing a certain area of the city does not seem to fit with the Union's past activities. In fact, it suits more Kisaragi's actions, who already blew up one of Mirage bridges with bombs. Nevertheless, once the bombs are removed and the Raven returns, possibly killing the Armored Core Volcano, he returns to see more emails. One from his operator who writes about how recent rumours put the Union to blame for all the trouble affecting Laird, and Crest, seeing this backlash, thinks this is the perfect time to wipe them out, and has already began amassing forces to rid Laird of them. While these two fight, however, the Raven would get back to work, with the Mirage having the Raven attack a Crest assembly plant, shutting it down, and defending water processes for Kisaragi before finally being asked by Crest to help them fight the Union, on the mission Destroy Gun Emplacements. It's here the Raven learns Crest interrogated a captured Union operative to find out the Union's base is in Sector 617, a conservation area lush with vegetation, thick fog and heavy rain. The Union is using this as natural cover for large gun emplacements to defend their headquarters. They want the Raven to take them out. It's a mission the Raven takes, and along with this has the choice to join the attack on the headquarters after, or not. If he accepts, however, it would see the Raven act as a distraction while Crest readies missiles for an assault. After the missiles are launched, however, and the Raven returns to base, there is another email from his operator. It reads about an emergency developing during his time returning to the base, as it seems, while Crest would overrun the Union, suddenly a large force entered into the fray and started to attack both sides. Along with this, more of these unknown forces have started to appear all over Laird, and seem to only wreak havoc wherever they go. It is suggested from reports that these units share the same enhanced performance levels as that one armoured core the Raven fought in Rugen Lab. Global Cortex's best guess is that these attacking forces are being led by the controller, however they are not sure. It seems this unknown force has thrown everything into chaos, and the Raven would see this first hand with his next mission when Mirage pay for his aid in defending one of their cities, Trine, which had been invaded by some of these unknown forces. Yet the true extent of these attacks would only be read about by the Raven on his return, where his operator once again emails him to let him know that the controller forces are targeting corporate assets and even the life systems of Laird itself. With this, Mirage is trying to develop a program to access the controller. It is not clear, however, if they are doing this to stop the controller or using this as a chance to try and take control of it themselves for their own purposes. Laird is in chaos, 
and yet the Raven would still keep getting jobs, as corporations would keep on fighting each other, even during such a time. Some of these missions include destroy the remains of Kisaragi Force in the mine, the removal of pulse generators set up by Crest in the vents of the waste disposal layer, which Mirage facilities have been suffering constant system outages, even as the world around them burns, these corporations would only do things to suit themselves. It would only be one mission from Mirage that seems to be doing something. As they ask the Raven to take out the radar equipment on a Crest base, they need to work on their program to access the controller. It's here inside the base he would kill the Raven's backbreaker and flare up, a hard mission with a result the Raven may not be happy with, as after his return, he gets an email from Mirage. Their attempt to access the controller has failed, and to even try again, they would need more time, something they do not have, as the controller's forces now are causing major leaks of water, radiation, and oxygen. They end the message by saying, Has the controller abandoned us? It's a clear sign that even Mirage is feeling that they have lost. Yet the Raven had little time for the worries of a corporation, whose actions only made things worse with their fighting. As his next mission, he would be requested by Crest to defend their headquarters. The Raven would be guarding the ventilation ducts to stop controller forces, and while he would succeed, the news on his return would not be so good. Crest's headquarters was wiped out by the controller's forces, and now is spreading into all the other areas under Crest's control as well. Mirage is gathering forces to defend its own areas, but the outcome looks bleak. Perhaps anger or even scared, the Raven then reads the message from Crest. We appreciate the help, Raven, but Crest is through. We no longer have the means to retaliate. That the controller is malfunctioning has been known to us for a long time. Malfunctioning or not, if the controller has decided to destroy us, then that is our fate. People cannot survive in a world without order, even if that order is simply an illusion. So it is here that Crest give in, unable to do anything as the controller forces march on. For Mirage, however, they are not done yet, as they have a mission for the Raven. This mission would see the Raven destroy a massive underwater MT that Mirage believed only the controller has in this sector that was closed due to becoming flooded. However, it's after this that Mirage sends an email asking for the Raven's help again. However, not in the usual way. It was very kind and talked about the people of Laird hoping he would take this mission as if he was their saviour. It was strange and the Raven knew this. However, a job is a job. As such, he would be sent by Mirage with another AC named Huntress to investigate Magna Ruins, as they believe there was a way to get to the controller here. On arrival, however, the pair of ACs are attacked by cloaked controller forces before then another Raven enters. Rebels like yourself have outlived their uses. Thinking you could destroy the controller? What a fool idea! A trap and it had been laid to kill the Raven as even his own partner turns on him for trying to destroy the controller. In the end, however, the Raven of Armor Core 3 would kill off both Huntress and Fanfare. Spitting feathers at this point, the Raven returns, and there is a message from Raj who states they never intended to get rid of the controller, simply wanting to administrate its power, as they rely on the controller for their continued existence. If you act in haste, you will condemn us all. Spoken like a member of a cult. It seems the Raven had become the bad guy. However, there was one group left willing to hire him, the Union, who wants the Raven to do this. Our resources are stretched to the limit as it stands, but someone needs to take action. The only avenue left to us is rendering the controller inoperative. The location of the controller's core is stored on a mainframe in Mirage's Rahito laboratory. Past attempts to retrieve this information have all ended in failure. In order to gain access to the mainframe, you must retrieve three code keys and then enter them into their respective terminals. And so the Raven would do this, along with killing the Raven Nocturne, after which the Union would email the Raven again, telling him they are decoding the location of the controller as fast as they can. However, the controller forces had taken over the energy reactor for Layered, which if destroyed, would start a chain reaction, causing extensive damage throughout the city. The Raven was set off to do this, destroying a weapon very much like the justice system seen in the Armored Core 1 timeline, before having to face a controller AC. Its destruction, however, would seem to send the controller into an all-out attack mode, as it sends out another massive MT, this time a flying fortress of a machine. And the Raven either had to take it down alone or with a partner, 
The name of this MT would be DC-001, armed with large missiles, pursuit missiles, and laser cannons, the MT would be a hellish fight for the Raven, as it splits in two to have another way to attack. However, its end would finally let the Raven do what needed to be done. His final mission would be to infiltrate Layered Hub, where finally he would make his way to destroy the controller. The place is a maze with pillars he has to jump on to access higher areas, rooms filled with controller MTs, before finally he comes to a room with two controller armoured cores. Not a word is spoken between the three as they battle it out. By the end, however, the Raven is the last one standing, as finally he enters the room these two controller ACs guarded to come face to face with the controller. A large AI database protected by a powerful shield and small MTs. It's here the Raven would have to destroy a piece of the center pillar the AI sits on to reveal its emergency reactor. Destroying this, the Raven sees the final moments of the AI as it shuts down saying this. Damage to the main processor exceeds 90%. Energy supply diminishing. Attempting reconstruction. Executing final directive. The end of controller rule. As he looks up to see the once dark ceiling of Laird opening up, the surface once destroyed by mankind had become full of life. Rolling green hills and a bright sun that beamed down into the darkness of Laird. This is where the story of Armor Core 3 ends.